To present this year's award in nonfiction is David Shields, the panel's chair. David Shields is the author of eight books, including Black Planet, Facing Race During an NBA Season, a finalist for the National Book Critics Circle Award, Remote, Reflections on Life in the Shadow of Celebrity, winner of the Penn Revson Award, and Dead Languages, a novel, winner of the Penn Syndicated Fiction Award. He has received a Guggenheim Fellowship, two NEA Fellowships, an Ingram Merrill Foundation Award, a Ludwig Vogelstein Foundation grant, and the New York Foundation for the Arts Fellowship. It gives me great pleasure to welcome David Shields. Thank you. First of all, my thanks to my fellow panelists, Deborah, Bl Deborah Blum of the, the University of, of Wisconsin School of Journalism, to Caroline El Elkins of the History Department at Harvard University, to Annette Gordon-Reed of New York Law School, and to James Shapiro of the, the English Department at, at Columbia University. <clears throat> My congratulations to the five finalists. To, to Edwidge Dandekat for Brother, I'm Dying, published by Alfred A. Knopf. To Christopher Hitchens, for God is not great, how religion poisons everything. Published by 12 Hachette Book Group USA. To Woody Holton for Unruly Americans and the Origins of the Constitution. <clears throat> Published by Hill and Wang, Farrar, Strauss, and Giroux. To Arnold Rampersant for Ralph Ellison, a biography. <laughs> published by Alfred A. Knopf. And to, and to Tim Weiner for Legacy of Ashes. <clears throat> The history of the CIA. How did the panel choose these five books? How did we get along? We got along famously for the first several months. <laughs> we made the usual jokes about how would we ever make it up to our respective mail carriers? How the how the floorboards and ping pong tables in our houses and apartments groaned under the weight of, under the weight of, under the weight of so many books. And, and what in the world we're going to do with so many tomes. When it came to crunch time though, the last couple months of today, and reportedly tonight, we quarreled, we tussled, we cajoled, we pleaded, we tossed verbal brick bats, we walked out, we walked back in. But so what? To quote the, to quote the poet, writing is fighting. I've never felt more directly and more vividly that books matter. And the book that we judged to matter the most, that we thought told us the most about our low dishonest decade and the several low dishonest decades, the, the several low dishonest decades preceding, the winner of, of this year's National Book Award in nonfiction is Tim Weiner's The Legacy 
of ashes, the history of the CIA. Well, I'm prosaic, not poetic, so I have a written speech. And I have about 120,000 people to thank in 120 seconds. Time me. Uh, first to the readers who tackled this book, to the reviewers and critics across the political spectrum who found some merit in it, to the government historians and archivists who helped turn secrets into public records, to the writers and journalists who have struggled against official secrecy, to the memory of friends and colleagues who have given their lives to get the news, to good, the good people at Doubleday right here, Steve Rubin, Bill Thomas, Nicole Dewey, Chastity Lovely, Nora Reichard, Rebecca Holland, Karen Marcus, and above all, and I would like you to stand, please, Phyllis Gran, a dynamo, a great editor, a force of nature, come on. And, and to the Ubermensch, uh, Peter Olson at Bertelsmann, I've never met him, but he put his shoulders to the, to the wheel. Um, these people, ladies and gentlemen, turned my finished manuscript into a hardcover book in three weeks. Uh-huh. <laughs> to Elena Richardson and the good people at Yaddo, who sheltered me in a cold winter. To Kathy Robbins in the Robbins office, Mwah. big kiss. And above all, to the love of my life, Kate Doyle, thanks, darling. Uh, one of the great things about being a newspaper reporter is you get paid to get an education. And my press pass has taken me to Afghanistan and Pakistan and Haiti and Liberia and Sudan and Cuba. And 20 years ago, it took me inside the headquarters of the CIA. And that was my graduate school. OK, big statement. It should be the goal of intelligence to know the world, but when that proved too hard, we set out to change the world and to make it fit our prejudices and our preconceptions. And when you read through the files of the CIA, you see raw power at work toward that end. Those files show you what American leaders really wanted and they, what they really thought and what they really did in the name of the United States. And what I tried to do is set that record out in simple declarative sentences. And this award's a great thrill, thank you. Uh, but it, it is testament only to the power of the record revealed. And maybe, maybe, to the fact that our democracy, despite everything, is still open enough to see a glimpse of what we've wrought abroad. Uh, res ipsa loquitur, and the rest is gloss, and thank you.